How you doing guys? Malik over at Modern Pawn. Today we're going to be talking about what differentiates an actual machine gun from a standard semi-automatic AR-15. We're going to show you some of the different parts, what one part looks like in a machine gun versus its semi-automatic counterpart and how they function. Quick recap on how a semi-automatic trigger works. You basically have, this is a standard mil spec style trigger. This is very similar to what the full auto trigger sear combo looks like. What you have right here is your primary sear. The face is here and here, one on the sear, one on the hammer. When you pull the trigger, it disconnects and the hammer comes forward, sets off the primer. This right here is your disconnector interface. When you pull the trigger, hammer is allowed to come forward, bang, rifle goes off, it starts to cycle. As the hammer is pushed back down by the bolt carrier group, it then catches the disconnector and hooks right there. When you let go of the trigger, it re-catches right here on this interface, resets the trigger, cycle. All right guys, this is a full auto lower receiver. Uh, first thing you're going to notice that's different about this receiver is A, it says auto, which some semi-autos say that, but it has a third pin. This, when you're looking at the outside of a receiver and you want to know if it's a full auto or a semi-auto, that's the telltale right there, your third pin. This third pin right here holds what we call the second sear interface. Okay. So one of the first parts that's different on a full auto versus a semi-auto is this right here. This is a full auto hammer. As you can see, it has this extra knuckle right here. If I was wanted to make this hammer um, semi-auto compliant or whatever you want to call it, I would just grind it flat right there. I would take that, that little knuckle off there and it would, it would work just fine dropping it in a semi-automatic rifle. In standard single fire mode, just like a semi-auto, you pull the trigger, bang, goes off, the hammer comes back, catches the disconnector. As I let go of the trigger, it goes back to the sear. Just like a semi-automatic, no different. Where this varies is when you roll the safety into the auto position. If you notice what happened when I rolled this safety over, this little guy right here comes back and engages due to the safety. Now the safety is different in a full auto rifle versus a semi-auto rifle, it does a couple of more things. Uh, what it does when I roll it into this position is it depresses the disconnector and uh, engages this second sear right here. Okay. When you roll the safety from fire to auto, watch what happens to the disconnector. It's going to push down on the disconnector. So when I pull on the trigger, that disconnector doesn't move because it's depressed at the moment. That's what the auto safety is going to do when it's rolled into the full auto position. It also allows this right here, the second sear, to come forward. The mating face of the second sear is right down here. That is going to catch on the hammer up here. So with the hammer in the downward position, the selector, when rolled to full auto, pushes down on the disconnector and activates the second sear, which is right here. So with the rifle in this position, we fire the rifle, bang, it goes off. The disconnector is now fully depressed. It's out of the way. As the rifle cycles, the hammer comes back and I'm still holding the trigger down, okay? I'm still holding the trigger down, which I am disengaging the primary sear which is up here the first sear is disengaged as well as the disconnector this comes down and it hooks right there I don't know if you saw that let's repeat that hammers down full auto position pull the trigger bang the rifle goes off the hammer comes back as the rifle cycles and catches right there now as the bolt is coming back forward there is a component on the bolt carrier group that is the second sear trip face. So there's a, a face on the bolt carrier group. As it comes forward, it grabs that 
and it pushes this forward makes the rifle fire. So that right there is tripped with the bolt carrier group. And in the full auto position with the trigger pulled to the rear, the primary sear and the disconnector are out of the picture. All right, okay. Let's talk about the bolt carrier group. The bolt carrier group is part of the full auto function of the rifle. This face right here is what comes forward and hits that second sear. If you have a semi-automatic rifle, there's a good chance your bolt has been neutered. This right here is what I refer to as a neutered bolt. If you notice, this has been milled back further and that further milled back portion right there, as the bolt comes forward, it, there's nothing there to hit the auto sear or the second sear. This right here is what I call a partially neutered. When you look at it, it looks like, oh yeah, it has a little thing that'll hit it. Well, it doesn't come far enough forward. And generally speaking, if this back webbing right here is not the same length as this front webbing, it's probably a semi-automatic bolt carrier group. That's what a full auto bolt carrier group will look like when it's in battery. So that's full auto, that's uh, partially neutered, and that's a fully neutered one. So the bolt carrier group, there is a difference between a full auto and a semi-automatic bolt carrier group. Guys, let's take a look at what happens when we pull the trigger on a full auto and how the bolt carrier group works in sync with the trigger mechanism. So we're in full auto mode right now. We pull the trigger, and when we want to empty more than one round, we hold the trigger to the rear in full auto mode. So we're going to pull the trigger, the rifle's going to go off. Now, let's mimic keeping the trigger to the rear with this zip tie. So I'm, I'm like pulling the trigger. The rifle goes bang, the gas system then wants to start cycling the rifle. So it pushes back on this, cocks the hammer ejects the round, it's coming forward, it then catches on this second sear right here. As it's coming forward, the bolt starts going into battery. As the bolt is going into battery, if you look right here, it's gonna, this is gonna hit this interface right at the very last second. At the very last second, it's gonna push that and bam, go off again then the, rifle, the bolt's gonna come to the rear, cock, come back forward, bang, go off again. So you don't have the hammer just following the bolt carrier group. It actually allows the bolt to get a, that far away from the hammer before it hits it. If the hammer just kept following the bolt carrier group on the way down, you would end up with light strikes or you would end up with the rifle firing out of battery which is a dangerous situation. So it allows the bolt to get all the way to right here before click, bang, it goes off. And that's about as far forward as that bolt carrier ever gets, is about right there. So it really, ne it, it doesn't fire until the bolt is pretty much all the way home, then it clicks off and it keeps going. That's that right there is why the full auto is safe it doesn't ever fire out of battery. Uh, it never fires prematurely with that hammer. That hammer just doesn't roll forward like that. Where uh, if there, that sear wasn't there in this position, it would just come forward like that. And generally, if you have like say something stick inside your disconnector or your disconnector were to break and the rifle were just to do that as, the, as it was coming forward, the odds of it firing are slim. And they, and they designed it for that reason. That's partially why this is right here, this little shelf, so it can't get to the firing pin. The hammer can't touch the firing pin unless the hammer's straight up and down. In full auto mode, cock the hammer, I pull the trigger, the rifle goes off, and now it starts to cycle. It comes to the rear, it catches on that second sear, as it's sliding forward, it's going to fire right there. Right at the very last second, the rifle fires. So again, catches on the second sear, it's coming forward, and it fires right at the very end. Right there, right at the very end. The, the bolt's pretty much 
all the way in battery. And so when that happens at full speed, the bolt will be in battery by the time that hammer comes forward and sets it off a second time.